All right, well, that was fun. All right, well, let's get started. We're going to break this webinar up into three parts. We've got a short PowerPoint that's going to go over um, a little bit about bamboo, but also each of the products we're going to feature today. Um, we're looking at our new org chart plus, which is set to be released into beta this week. And then um, the new uh, release of calendar plus, which with the exchange support, this is actually our second release. So we're going to look at some new things that we've added, some really exciting stuff to make it even more usable. We've had some great feedback from the market on the first release. There were some limitations that were known going into it that we've been able to get past that I think you'll all be excited about. And these two products together are just essential for every uh, SharePoint portal out there for SharePoint Online. So I'm Rob Manfredi. I'm the owner of Bamboo Solutions, cheap cook and bottle washer, as we say. Um, we're excited to have you all here. So let's get started um, with the tour. All right, so who is Bamboo? Boy, we've been doing products for SharePoint forever. Uh, we, but not only do we create uh, software for Microsoft 365 and SharePoint on-prem, but we're also a services group. We're a Microsoft Gold partner. We serve about 8,000 customers, 2,000 on active maintenance for our products, and probably another couple hundred that we do. Portal builds, Power App development, Power BI, uh, Power Automate. Um, we do a lot of Dataverse solutions. We have a, a great migration team that helps people migrate from, let's say, GoDaddy 365 into Microsoft 365, or from anywhere like uh, Google Workspace into Microsoft 365, or if you're looking to get into the government cloud, uh, we can help set that up as well. So lots of good stuff we do on the services side, in addition to what we're seeing today on the products. Um, like we always say our experience makes us great. Um, we've had this company has been around for 10 years. Uh, um, actually, probably longer than that, 12 years. I think 2011 was our founding. Um, we're about 40 people, so we're not huge, but we're definitely a uh, I would say a good size for a SharePoint company or a Microsoft 365 company. We are laser focused in that niche. Um, and again, just lots of customers and most of our work does come from our existing clients. So we're pretty proud of that. Uh, just some out of the box services that we offer, uh, which we've already spoken about on our migration side and support side. But let's jump into the first product, which is Org Chart Plus. So what OrgChart Plus does is it allows you to create a filterable organizational chart and structure pulled from Entra or Active Directory. Um, uh, this displays who people report to as well as who's reporting to them. Um, it's searchable. Once you find a, a user, you can actually give them a call, start a chat with them or uh, schedule an appointment. Uh, there's a couple different views in the first release that allows you to see just a two level, which is a little more compact, or the full structure um, of the org. And what we've added in the first release is what we call the starting node configuration. So let's say um, you want to show um, all the folks that are in a certain region or a certain business unit or, or what have you. Uh, once you get that, you want to start from, let's say, the head of HR down. So you could pick that HR by their email, um, and it will then display for that org chart just from the HR person and all of their direct reports down. So you can see where that becomes uh, pretty nice to have on your team sites, on your uh, org sites, and your finance sites so that you can see uh, who's in a department, what their org and reporting structure is, and, uh, and you know, just get to know the folks within your organization. Um, we do this all by uh, going into the graph API and grabbing that information, that data structure from um, Active Directory. Um, the graph API is something that comes with your Microsoft 365. It's just something we, we can talk to that allows these applications to then uh, share information. So all of those filtered results come within SharePoint on the web part. We display it, allow you to browse it, and do all the other great filtering uh, in there. Um, the filters are ultimately going to be this complex. They're a little simpler right now uh, in the first release, but essentially this shows you what, what you can do. On a pre-cache level, um, it allows you to grab information, um, a subset of your data before you actually bring it to your site so that we're not throttling, um, trying to bring in all 30,000 employees or what have you. Um, so you can actually prefetch. Uh, information. Then once you've got your set of data, you can actually apply filtering on that as well. And that filtering can be done by email, 
Um, it can be done by uh, whether it contains an employee ID or not, um, and also by groups, by SharePoint groups or the like. So really some things that allow you to get to the set of data that makes the most sense for that instance of Org Chart Plus. Um, we're caching that data, so responsiveness is very quick, but you can actually have that cache reset on a time interval and uh, and the like. So let's take a quick look at the web. Actually, we I don't know if we have that up. But let's take a quick look at our website and how you can get to our product pages. All right. So as you know, our website is bamboosolutions.com. Um, when you come to our page, you can see navigation across the top. This is all of our products. These are uh, links to our services, our migration team, and then our support team. Um, on the product side, uh, on the left, you see the blue products. Those are all for SharePoint Online. The green products are our legacy on-prem products that currently support 2016, 19, and 2022. So those are still used by lots of customers and we still improve it and also support the newer versions. Uh, at some point, our SharePoint Online products will work on-prem, but they don't now. The SharePoint frameworks are completely different. They're, they're uh, much older in SharePoint on-prem and therefore it was holding us back from developing a more advanced product um, if we were trying to support both on-prem and the cloud. So once Microsoft does get that framework um, current, uh, our online products will also work on-prem. But until then, they, they just don't. All right, so if we go in here to view all products, um, we'll get a list of all the products, a little information, and the product pages. I do want to point out that we do love our small businesses and not-for-profits. Um, we've got a special pricing for any organization um, under 100 folks, that's a maintenance only price, or if you're a not-for-profit under 300 folks, uh, you also can take advantage of our maintenance only pricing, um, which we'll get into in a little bit, but you can learn more about that there. And then viewing all of our products, you then get the tile view of each of our 25 products that work uh, in SharePoint Online um, and the like. We're looking at Calendar Plus and Org Chart Plus, and we do have, I think, a stub of a page for Org Chart Plus here um, that is showing that the you can join our beta program uh, by clicking on that and get a pre-release. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the product. Okay, so we've got uh, Orchard Plus added to a page. Um, we've got the horizontal view that shows multiple layers of the organizational structure. So this is one of the views, and it is not a vertical view. It is a horizontal view, which works a little bit better. We'll show you why. Um, as you highlight, you can see the reporting structure um, is dynamic. Um, if you were to click on an individual, it would bring up the information that is available um, within uh, Active Directory. Some people have more than others. We do, you know, that is the single source of truth. The users themselves can manage their own data within Active Directory, but um, I can then start a chat, make a phone call, start a video call, schedule a meeting, or send an email on these action buttons. Um, pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and look at some of the settings within Org Chart Plus that are here. Again, this is a pre-release -re -pre version, so there will be more uh, coming in the in the next week or so. But by clicking on the gear icon, um, I get all of the settings that uh, are currently available within Org Chart Plus. So the first thing is, um, out of the data that you've pulled, where do you want to start your org chart? Um, you simply put in an email address and uh, let's change this to Mike H instead of Courtney. Um, and then we've got our filters. So if we want to say, um, you know what, I only want folks that are in operations or starts with a certain, uh, same with email, same with a job title or an office location, uh, you can say, you can add in that information that uh, uh, allows you to filter the results that you're only seeing specific. Now, this is a shorter list than is going to be in the release, but you get an idea of how easy it is to filter that data to create an org chart that makes uh, sense. In this case, um, we're going to change um, the rendering to vertical, and we're going to go a two-level tree 
um, which will only show two levels at a time. So let's go ahead and save that. And um, what we see here is the new structure where Mike is at the top and then all of his direct reports. And this is the two level structure. So we're only seeing two levels. If you wanted to go down a level, you would simply click on, um, I don't think anybody has a level below this. Uh, actually, let's go up and we see Courtney and then there's Michael. And then if I wanted to go down a level, I click on that and then I see Michael at the top and then the levels there. All right, so again, at the two level structure, you can um, sort of scroll up and down using this by clicking on the card, you get the same actions um, and the like. Now, if we go back to our settings and we say we want um, the single page tree, what we get is the org chart in vertical, right? But again, there's nobody under Mike, so we're only seeing two levels, but we've got this little scroll action happening. So I'm not happy with that. So we can go through and then change this instance to be horizontal, right? And then we get kind of a much nicer looking services group org structure. And this is our services team that reports to Mike, who's the director of commercial services. Um, if I wanted this to be a little more all encompassing, I can just say, you know what, I'm going to start with Courtney. Who is our team lead in finance. And we'll save that. And now with that structure. Oops, go ahead. What happened there? We'll say OK. Single page tree. Horizontal. Oh, I spelled their email wrong. User error. There we go. And there's Courtney, right? And then. The reports. There's Mike and then his tree under him, so you can see how that renders nicely. OK, so really straightforward, but really super useful and something that users don't necessarily have to adopt, but it actually creates an information for them in each of your locations that becomes very, very useful to um, to them. So again, we have a beta of this product ready. So if anybody's interested, just drop us an email off of that product page or. Respond to an email that we're going to send you after this and we'd be happy to get you set up with a 30 day free trial of the beta and help us influence that product. Um, OK, let's jump back to our PowerPoint. And look at Calendar Plus. So what Calendar Plus does is it allows you to roll together events, uh, list data and um, meetings from Exchange into a single unified calendar view. So while you can roll together all of this stuff into a view, the Calendar Plus can also sit on top of a single calendar. So it does provide a lot of additional features that you don't get with calendaring out of the box. Um, those events can be color coded, they're filterable, they're searchable. Um, you can choose a calendar view or a Gantt view. We support week numbering and the like. Um, what we've added in, in recent, what we added over this month, over this summer, was additional month views. Uh, better multi-month displays, the search bar, some tooltip performance, some reordering of the legend, which we'll see. And we've also added exchange support. So this allows us to tunnel again through the graph API and um, grab uh, calendars from exchange and display them in SharePoint. Not only can we show that data, but it is two-way communication. So you can actually create events or edit events that are ex in exchange from SharePoint and they look just like, uh, you know, calendars that were within um, a SharePoint. So a single unified view. What we've added in um, this release this November is we are now supporting group calendars, um, which means that uh, these large sort of asset calendars or conference room calendars can now be added. Uh, just like user calendars. We do preserve all the permissioning. So if a user calendar is added, that user calendar has to be shared with a logged in user in SharePoint or they won't see it. But those group calendars become pretty uh, uh, important because uh, people want to add conference room schedules or other 
you know, group calendars that everybody already has access to into SharePoint. Um, we had a limitation of only four calendars um, in the first release, but we were able to um, improve that performance. And now we, it's as much as you want to handle uh, bringing calendars over. We've done 14, 15. It gets a little cumbersome after that. But a lot of people have a lot of, uh, you know, if you want to show all the conference room calendars for a specific building, Calendar Plus is a great use for that as well. Um, just some better performance and stability as we keep working on that code and moving it uh, through different releases. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at that product now. OK, so we'll come back to our products. And we actually have Calendar Plus right here on our mega menu. So we can see the Calendar Plus product. Um, if you do want a uh, trial of that, you just simply click the Try Buy button. It brings up our shopper cart. And you can grab the trial version for 365, add to the cart, check out, no credit card needed, full access to our support team, and you can use the product for 30 days. So let's take a look at what that product looks like. OK, so we're on a modern page in SharePoint Online, and um, we've got Calendar Plus configured to bring in um, a task list from a project calendar, uh, or rather a calendar from a project team site, a SharePoint list with dates and times, and an exchange calendar. And you can see that my view is um, the same. It doesn't really necessarily matter whether the, the sort data source is Exchange or if it's coming from a SharePoint list uh, from any site collection. Now, I do have the ability to turn them all off if I'd like, and then I can look at just a single calendar, right? Or I can turn off a calendar and look at a single category, right? The pop-ups are nice because I can take a look at any details that you want to configure into that pop-up um, without having to do a page refresh. Um, so this is all stuff you can't do with SharePoint out of the box. You can see we also have um, a weekday view, which is nice because it gets rid of Saturday and Sunday and makes the grid a little bit bigger. We've got an agenda view, which gives you a full month view and only shows you the dates that actually have um, uh, events in them. We've got multi month views, which are a three month view, which is the current month and the next two months quarter view and a year view. Right, which gives you the full year uh, in there. All these are also exportable to PDFs, images, Excel, um, and you can add uh, events to those sub calendars, whether they're in Exchange or uh, within uh, SharePoint. Um, sometimes there's a lot of events. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. And you want to find events. So we actually do support our own search that allows us to. Um, search across all the calendars that you've rolled together and bring back a list of events that match your search criteria into a nice view uh, so you can find things pretty quickly. So uh, again, a real workhorse of a product, uh, one uh, that uh, could be useful on just pretty much every, every site out there. So the configuration of this is very simple. Um, once you add it to your app catalog and add it to a page like any of our products, if you've got contributor right access, you can come in and get the gear wheel. And this allows you as an administrator to set up sort of the data sources, the views you want, the legends and things like that. So uh, simply put, you work your way across this where we're setting in this general tab, uh, whether you want a calendar view or a Gantt view or a list view, whether you want the new button or not. And again, all of it is security trim. So if I don't have access to one calendar, I will see the rest of the calendars. I just won't see that calendar, which is something that SharePoint can't do out of the box as well. Um, you can see I've got four items in each of these cells before I get a more button. That's configured just by simply saying, how big do you want that cell to show you how many events? Same thing with your multi-month views. On the data sources, this is pretty cool. Configuring a SharePoint list or an Exchange calendar is simply a radio button click for this one data source. In this case, it's a SharePoint list. I give it a name, some fonts. I point to the site collection that lives. I grab the list from the list of lists, and then I simply say in that list, which field is my title field, start date, due date, what fields I want my tool tip, and what is my category field. We bring all the unique items. Uh, in you can change the colors. You can decide to not have them all there. You can also filter the data coming from this calendar by a SharePoint view 
or specify a filter condition. So sometimes in a team calendar, there may be uh, lots of events, but they only want certain events bubbled up to maybe a rolled together calendar. So you can say, look, if this uh, you know description says public, then roll the event up, or if it's of a certain type, roll it up. Um, and this way you're not seeing everything in the roll together calendar, but maybe just a subset of that data. And you can do that again through a list or a filter condition that you can nest many of them together. So we just kind of do that over and over again. Here's another SharePoint list. And then here's an exchange calendar. So in this exchange calendar, you use an email, um, you load the calendars, you grab your source calendars, and we bring over the categories from those exchange calendars, and then off you go. So those are how we configure those three calendars, all point and click, very simple to do. You can choose to turn some of our views off so it's not as cumbersome, turning week numbers on and off, your starting day, is it Sunday or Monday? If you want week numbering, how do you do calculate your week numberings? On the legend, again, we talked about reordering. So if I want that exchange to be higher in my legend, I can do that. I can move my legend to the right, left, or bottom. Um, and the like. So once I've done all of that, I hit submit, my configurations are changed, and then this instance of the calendar is ready to go with your, um, so you can see my exchange calendar is now in the middle, right, instead of uh, in the order in which it was added. So very cool. Um, let's head back over to uh, this and talk about licensing and support. Um, and if anybody has any questions, you can just grab a chat. I'm kind of watching it. I should have mentioned that earlier and I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, for you all. So licensing and support, we've done this a little different, right? So since we've come from the on-prem world, we've talked to lots of our customers and they were loath to go to a subscription model. Um, web parts were always sold as a perpetual license and maintenance because you installed them into your farm. At the end of the day, SharePoint Online is essentially your farm. It's your own tenant. And our software runs independently inside your tenant. It doesn't require any servers from us. It doesn't require any talk back or, or communications with us. So it is really a piece of software that is encapsulated within the SharePoint security of your tenant. So we kept our license and maintenance model. So it is a single price for a perpetual license for your entire tenant, which means you can use it on as many pages and site collections as you like once you purchase the product, right? This perpetual license and maintenance model, the first year that you purchase the product, it includes first year maintenance and support, which means updates and new versions, as well as access to our help desk. Um, and then second year maintenance, if you choose to continue it, which we recommend because Microsoft 360 or Office 365 is changing often, um, is only 22% of that purchase price. So it's it's the old school model um, that really gives you an operational uh, comfort level that this thing is not going to stop working. Um, or if you add a couple users or have an acquisition, it's going to cost you more moving forward. Now, if you do have over 2,000 users um, in SharePoint or within your company, we have an additional yearly support fee. That support fee is called our enterprise support cost. So our products are roughly $4,000, right? That's a perpetual license. Maintenance is gonna be about 800 bucks a year, just to use some round numbers. So Calendar Plus is $4,000. Um, I think Org Chart Plus is gonna be roughly the same. Um, next year, maintenance comes up, it's $800. Now, we have some customers with 50,000 users. It's very hard to support them for $800 a year. So to not make it complicated, what we've done is created an enterprise support cost, which is a per account fee, not a per product fee, that essentially increases the amount of support those customers pay to use our product. So if you're between 2,000 and 10,000 users, there is a $2,500 a year fee, that's a support fee per account. So it would be the $800 for the product plus the $2,500 per year. If you had a second product, it would be $800 for that product as well, but you would only pay the $2,500 once. If you get larger than that, it's a more, and then we do have several tenants with you know three or 400,000 people in them. So it, it, they definitely open up more tickets in their smaller groups. Conversely, if you're super small, like we talked about, you would only pay maintenance to buy the product. So instead of the $4,000 first year, 
plus any enterprise support cost, you would only pay the $800 the first year and you would get a perpetual license and your support would be $800 every year thereafter if you chose to stay on it. Um, that's all available uh, on our website. We disclose our pricing publicly um, and the like. So for example, like we just talked about, $39.95, Perpetual license and support first year, second year is $878. That's the 22%. Um, if you're over that 5,000, right, you would have the $2,500. You would buy the product um, plus a second product. Let's say it's $1,850. So your first year cost would be $8,300. Second year would be the $2,500. And then just the maintenance for those two products. And your second year would be $3,700. Happy to quote that out. Happy to have a talk with you. Um, it's meant to be simple. And kind of once it sinks in, it becomes very simple and understandable, um, but it is, um, it's very easy to manage for all of us. All right, so I think that's all we had to show today. Um, those two products are available, one in beta, one just it's released and ready for you to try in a trial. Um, we'll send a recording of this around to you all. Um, if you want to respond to me that you want to be in the beta, we'd happy to get you set up. And uh, we want to thank you all for coming and sharing uh, what we've been up to. If there are no questions, we'll stay around for a little bit. Um, have a great day and uh, enjoy.